गुड इवनिंग एंड वेलकम टू गना शॉर्ट गना शॉर्ट में आप सबका स्वागत है टुडे वी गोट डिस्कस वाई इज चाइना pessimistic do we have an answer for it and is it that much of a million dollar question that we can't answer a uh, many issues there and i am running contra to what is the popular opinion everyone says that china is the next superpower china is going through hiccups it will revive its economy will revive people say that look everything is hunky dory thoda bahut idhar udhar hai and you know china has grown 20 billion dollar economy kind of a story but the question i ask is why is china pessimistic if it is all so powerful and i i'll try and answer this and uh, that will be uh, quite an issue but before that i would like to uh, show a clip uh, which i did it's it's actually an extract of uh, a news 9 interaction which i had very recently with um, sandeep punitan who is one of the best defense editors going around in india have a look at it and then i'll talk in the studio i have with me my colleague TV 9's foreign editor R Sridharan we have ambassador Prabhu Dayal joining us and professor Sanjay Pandey as well gentlemen welcome to the news 9 plus show general shankar i want to recall a conversation i had with you in june 2020 when you said that the pla had not come prepared for war at that time you know you had studied the way they had mobilized and they had deployed the fact the simple fact that i still remember you told me that their gun emplacements were not dug in they hadn't built the kind of bunkers that would indicate a kind of preparedness for a conflict or a war it was just calculated for muscle flexing at that time i didn't believe all of what you said then but this seems to be the case for four years later you have indicated the fact that this was actually meant to be aggressive bullying of the kind that they do with all their neighbors from time to time mm-hmm. but you know given the fact that over the last four years both sides have built up so much military infrastructure there's something like 100000 soldiers that both india and china have deployed there what are the things that you feel should now be done to ensure that these deployments don't lead to some kind of a border clash china right so what i'm trying to put across to you is 2020 april Uh, I used to have extensive talks with uh, Sandeep Punitan. I never used to come on TV or, you know, I never had a channel, nothing. But I used to talk to him. I used to write about it, and I I explained to him that look, nothing will happen. Don't worry. Thoda bahut ho jayega. Indian army will react well and all fine. <laughs> no one believed me. I wrote. No one believed me. Then down the line. i uh, you know kept writing about china and you know how it's going to go down and all no one believed me even now people don't believe me that's part of the show but you still i still have people like sandeep punitan who comes around and says look you told us so then so what am i going to tell you i told you so four years later you look at it four five that's a matter of time but what does it have to do with what we are going to do now uh, you got to understand that you know when you study a nation when you study a military you study a economy you study a people uh, all that actually goes into what is a nation really and you have to study all that if you don't study that you're out and that is why this you know study on why china is pessimistic is important it is the small bricks which make the wall and that is why i keep studying china through myriad angles many people would think that i'm often a tangent uh, dull 
but that's part of the show right uh war might look very great but at the end of the day you want to be successful in war you have to put in a lot of hard work and study and uh, i've had my success believe you me in ci operations i've had a lot of success in actual operations i've had a lot of success that adventure is out of my head or my heart i've been decorated for it that's also fine but what's not out is my study for my nation and this is part of that okay let's get going enough of my own you know wo kya bolte hain apne aap taali baja rahe right so why is china pessimistic you know this article actually caught my eye it said with pessimism in china and optimism in india confidence seem to seem key to the economic puzzle and south china morning post coming out with this kind of a headline that there is optimism in india and pessimism in china i said yeah things must be really bad so let us start focusing on the pessimism in china and pessimism comes from what psychologically pessimism comes from bad things happening good things not happening both psychology hai ki so then i said okay let me do a little more hey, you see this fellow he has put out a set of tweets very interesting and this chap his name is uh, christopher rahaj he is a german he is walked from china to germany it took him 2 3 years and he has developed friendships all over in the countryside so i saw his tweet very interesting and actually that's what set me off you know it's not always that you read uh, something which is to do with their military and economy which take you along a path okay it something else so he said look He says in the next tweet he says a good friend from Germany fluent in Chinese just came back from China and told me the atmosphere is bleak lots of businesses have shut down especially restaurants bars cafes have closed because people don't spend money anymore this is interesting this is the talk of aam janta young people worry that the good days are over this is feeling from the ground okay and then he showed this he says the giant slogan on the wall says listen to chairman z's command be responsible to chairman z let chairman z rest assured china is definitely going back to the 1960s the cultural revolution era So it says a lot, you know. This is something ground up. Those of you who know how to read Chinese, read it. He said what I don't know, but he is, you know, this is what it is. So it gives you a pointer as to where China is psychologically and otherwise also. Okay, now let me go to something else, you know. we keep talking about usa and this and that and all you know usa has been a big player in everyone's life even now china wants to replace usa but it is dependent on usa i mean very funny if usa shuts the tap off china will collapse and most of us feel that china is rising and us is declining us is a decadent power this that all that in this entire game of pessimism optimism who's number 1 2 3 4 there are two factors which i thought i must focus on one is us and because that's the main antagonist to china and then the chinese ideology because china is a ideological nation 
I know I'm going to take you on a tangent, but I'll get you back. It'll be interesting to remember this. Alag sochne ki zarurat hai. So, okay, what is this story? You know, actually, if you look at it, USA needs an enemy to thrive. It's always, that's the history of USA. If there is no enemy, it exploits a country and it makes or creates an enemy. It creates out of that. That's the nature of USA ever since it was born. And then it destroys it or that becomes an ally or a sub, uh, subsidiary. You look at history. This is China. Uh, this is US history. First, it destroyed the colonial powers. After all, if you go back into the thing, there was a French colony in USA, there was a British colony, the Spanish also were there before the United States of America came into being. The Spanish came from the Mexican side, the French came from you know, the south. Now, but the US system, as it evolved, destroyed all of them and took over the country. And in doing so, it destroyed the mother nations, including the British Empire. That's the nature of USA. And then it went through its own civil war. That was before all, right? To you know, come to consolidate itself. It, it, it was cathartic. End of Second World War, USSR was its enemy. Uh, that enemy was built and then destroyed. Come, you know, after the Second World War, at the height of everything, the oil shock came. The Gulf countries started growing big. The USA pumped up the Gulf countries and destroyed them. And made completely all the Gulf countries its subsidiaries and controlled the oil market of the world. Then it started this business of war on terror and it destroyed complete West Asia to the north, Libya, Syria, all those countries, Iraq, all those, except Iran, everything, including Pakistan. One of the prime reasons why Pakistan was destroyed at Johal Ayabi is USA. I've not, I've forgotten to put Japan in this. Japan, Taiwan, Korea, all these are part of that game only. And the latest, China. So the thing is, China knows this. The Chinese are not fools. China, is no, China knows this. And they see it happening. That is why they're pessimistic about themselves. <laughs> I've got you back on track. Okay. Please understand this. There's a huge you know, river of pessimism in China because they see USA going away and USA shutting all taps slowly. And China doesn't have the tools. There you some people talk China has become big A wall all that. But the shocks are circling. And that's the feeling which Chinese have. It's not all I'm saying. It's what Chinese feel. Have. Okay. Uh, that's the important thing. And then there's a business of ideology which, you know, drives China. And you, uh, for the past three days, I've been reading about a book. I've not got my eyes on it. I've been reading about a book called On Xi Jinping. Written by Kevin Rudd. Kevin Rudd was uh, Prime Minister of Australia and he's now the, their ambassador to USA. He'd written a book about two years back. Now he's written a book again on Xi Jinping. And I've been listening to his talks. As I kept listening to his talks, this thing came. You know, you go back in time, in Mao's time, Mao took China hard left economically, politically, and diplomatically. He was a huge risk taker. And he did what he wanted. No one could question him. Okay. Deng. 
then did everything opposite of mao but he took economically he took uh, uh, china completely to the right politically he kept it a little to the left continued because tiananmen square he was the one who cracked the whip he said the communist party can't go he kept the country to the left but on other cases he said let go diplomatically he opened up economically he opened up commercially he opened up militarily he kept it hidden we know that but then shift to the right threatened the ccp rule completely okay and hence xi jinping when he came he took the ccp ideology with great expectations to the left that was the mode of survival so what do you see in xi jinping politically he is maoist left completely to the left maoist no more cent- little left of uh, the center like deng internal economics internal economics is complete to, to the left externally he is mercantilist in nature statism with reduced privatism or in fact crushed but he has got great expectations he still wants to rule the world economically bri debt trapping all that it doesn't gel imbalance next thing you have to understand when you say why china is pessimistic you know remember the question is why is china pessimistic this is the build up for that all signature campaigns of xi jinping have been failed one by one it is a failure whether you take common prosperity there no one talks of common prosperity two years back they couldn't stop talking of common prosperity dual circulation koi baat hi nahi karta western development model they wanted to de- develop the west the desert and you know uh, xinjiang and tibet and all that no one talks of it new production force last year he started new production force ev solar ea that's also failing today then you have to understand two years back xi jinping destroyed the financial tech sector the educational tech sector completely it was a, at that point of time i couldn't understand it was a 2 trillion trillion dollar hole he made in china's economy he also t- destroyed china's vitality along with that finished jack ma and all those you know ten cents printed duo they are all there but in very diluted form the property sector would have collapsed one way or the other he couldn't have stopped it because it had got so over leveraged now the net of all what i have spoken so far means means what it means loss of jobs and the ability to earn it has resulted in the current wave of pessimism which is in china it means loss of hope everyone talks of reform z champings for idea of reform is to go take country more to the left maoist leninist principles whereas we want them to go to a market economy it can't happen please understand stimulus no stimulus all that nonsense it just can't happen because ideologically mr xi jinping will not move to the right and this is what i learned for the past two days on reading or i uh, not reading the book about listening about that book i went to all channels to listen walk karte walk uh, you know kevin rudd talking he being questioned by 20 different people on xi jinping this is what i understood what is china's net status we all know that property crisis developers have collapsed huge debts there's a trail of failed investments okay unsold apartments and lost jobs we know that we are not going to go over it again chinese consumers have become frugal 
Businesses have cut salaries and scaled back hiring. College graduates joining the job market are unemployed. We know all this, but we'll touch base to see the final thing. Why? China's population has shrunk two years in a row. This is the fat point. Okay. Where this generation has only seen the economy growing. And they have got used to the idea of their life being improved. Suddenly, it doesn't happen. And confidence is eroding. Foreign firms once rushed to China to set up shops. They are now quitting. They are retrenching. They are cutting jobs. They are cutting the research and center develop, uh, centers. I know because there are three centers which were uh, set up in uh, Chennai by Siemens and Philips and one more, I'm forgetting. One by Tata's also. Uh, because they didn't want to go to Chennai, uh, to China. In fact, I was in the advisory committee to set up here. They're functioning well here, incidentally. All the local governments borrowed money for splashy projects. Why? Those projects kept the construction sector and people going for jobs. But now that's over. Real estate prices down. Chinese stocks are underperforming. Despite all this stimulus and stock going up and all, the stock value of most stocks, what you bought five years back to now, are less. No other place in the world that has happened, except in China. So why will the Chinese not be pessimistic? Their GDP growth is going down. They say that this year they will not touch that magic figure of 5%. Even this 4.7, 4.8% which they are talking of is pumped up. Not correct. This is it. This is IMF. IMF itself has lowered it, their growth. Okay. Even IMF talks of forecast on property and consumer confidence. Confidence is not I mean, It's very interesting that, you know, this words like pessimism, confidence and all that are now coming in headlines, which I could never think of. Urban employment, this is our urban employment, not uh, youth unemployment. That's also going up. It keeps going up and down. So they do something, it will go, uh, go down, then slowly it will go up again. That's what's happening. They're not able to control it. Top five firms are cutting their jobs. Okay, youth unemployment rate, this is a very interesting thing. If you see their employment was, you know, unem youth unemployment was at about 20, uh, yeah, 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 around 21%. That's when they stopped the uh, you know, uh, publishing figures. And after four or five months, they showed it here and it had fallen. I'm done to 14% or so, what the world. Okay. And then <coughs> they did some hoogery puguri, it went down. Now it shot up again. So actually it has shot up this much. You, if you really add this to here, this would be somewhere here. And where are you? Completely. It must be about 30% by now. Youth and employment. Okay. So they are reporting. This is the latest report. This is all last one month. Bloomberg, it has reported that, you know, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, what is this? It, pay cuts are there. The average monthly salaries offered by companies to new recruits in 38 key cities fell by 0.6%. In the third quarter from a year, following increases of 2.2 and 0.5% in the first second quarters. So first second quarter of something happened. It goes with the unemployment rate. Now it's fallen back. They want elderly people who are retired to join the workforce because they don't have 
and this gives me an indication that the population has already collapsed long back and I'll, I'll, I'll talk of population separately i told you population and um, climate change i'll talk separately now this is another funny thing they 60% of chinese over 60 are empty nesters so anyone who's over 60 60% of them are living single without any help and the state is pretty bad this if i won't be i mean all of us will be pessimistic if something like this happens in india the retail sales is going down i am showing all figures incidentally all these graphs are not mine they are beautifully made by the national bureau of statistics of china it's not mine i don't know how to make these graphs i download them from there are there officially you can download it this is a property investment it's in very negative in between it went up and then it's gone down what's the problem everyone talks of this problem china invest too much too much investment into roads this that all that and chinese pe- people spend too less it's a phenomenon of a rich state and a poor people i keep talking of this household consumption in usa it is 70% of gdp india and britain are nearly 60% you and i that's why our economy keeps growing because we keep uh, we don't have a choice but to consume the day we can consolidate our manufacturing and you know the few things your gdp will go 14 to 15% i have no doubt it's our incompetence which is making us grow at 7% what's kind of incompetence and we are still growing at 7% because we consume we, and this consumption economy of india has been our main stay for the past two decades european union people consume 50% in china they consume only 38% and this has remained unchanged for the past 12 years and it will not go up that's their saying not me will stimulus package help china's local government pay bills this is very interesting this article the local governments have a huge bill to pay debt will all the stimulus help them they they know watch what they say there's a professor at singhua university he says local government owned companies and employees an amount equivalent to 10% of the gdp that's a hell of a figure here yeah. 2 trillion dollars if it's say 20 trillion or 18 trillion is their gdp so local companies just owe i mean local governments owe companies and employees an equivalent of 10% of gdp है ना और मैं नहीं बोल रहा हूं वो ली डाउकुई जो भी है इज फ्रॉम सिंगवा यूनिवर्सिटी एंड व्हाट सम गाय यू नो हु हैज टू गेट मनी फ्रॉम दिस लोकल गवर्नमेंट सेस मोस्ट लोकल गवर्नमेंट्स हैव चेंज देयर लीडरशिप बिकॉज़ बदली होता रहता है सम गॉट चैप सैक सम चैप गॉट पर्स सम चैप डाइड सम चैप वेंट अवे रन अवे सो दैट न्यू गाय कम्स ही सेस नहीं नहीं यार वो कर्ज उसने लिया मैंने नहीं लिया i am not going to give you money that's what he says and this is very funny most local governments have changed their leadership and they have little incentive to actually repay their predecessors areas to businesses especially to smes so if the small chaps are not being paid and people are not being paid for up to one and a half two years so how, how will they be optimistic sir pure to ro rahe honge apne baal noch rahe honge and this is a very nice thing this is xi jinping going to someone he goes i i mean you know this is in chinese i don't know whether the english translation is yeah it's there he went through anhui okay on a trip everyone was told to come and wave at him and he waved and continued he says as for this this thing which comes he says this this fellow is behaving like kim jong un of korea that's the feeling some people has and he puts it so i think china mein sab kuch hai to ye hai actually 
Okay. The another guy, Zhang Hugyu, a research fellow at the IMF, Institute of Renmin University in China. Okay. Now, what he says is very interesting. Uh, that, as per this, uh, for using different parameters, they say, uh, you know, consumption was only 49% of GDP. And it has gone low. And in this uh, article, uh, he's come out with a lot of figures. And uh, Michael Pettis has written a beautiful article in Carnegie Endowment. And he's given a table out in that. He says, if the consumption goes from the current 50% as per this calculation, it goes to 80% or 70 to 80%. And the GDP rate grows at a particular figure, 6% or 7, 6% or 7%. Then it will take 12 years for China to recover. That table I couldn't understand. That's why I didn't show it to you. But if that is the case, oh, and all the best to China. Okay. And then, as per Zinua, in the same tweet, he says, China will launch a month-long campaign to promote consumption in November. As part of its efforts to bolster consumer spending, it will feature a series of activities promoting consumption in shopping, catering, tourism, exhibitions, performance, amongst others. government is saying, Why? As I read somewhere, one guy has said, yeah, hey, people want me to buy everything, but where do I have the money? If you, I mean, the, peop, the government thinks I have kept money, but I don't have. Whatever money I have is notional because it's in debt with someone else. So, pura circular debt chal raha hai Okay. Anyway. The last point is important. For a large economy, there's a, extremely high dependent on net exports for growth even now. It's not gone away. And it, with low consumption, high exports, it's an unbalanced economy. And this is not what I say, it is what every Chinese says. And they agree on it and they can't do anything about it. So if they cannot do, they will be pessimistic. Isn't it so? Why is pessimism in China? Because of this. Now, every year, the, every year, twice in a year, there's a place called Canton in which there's a fair. It's called the Canton Fair, which is a world famous, internationally known big fair, where people from all over the world come. For the past two to three years, the trends are identical as here. Now, I'll show you what the trends are. The trends. Now, they say the Canton Fair is the barometer of China's foreign trade. You have to understand, when you say manufacturing sector of China, it is not solar panels, it is not those cars, it is not all those things. It is those zips, small bags, small things, you know, which you go to USA, in every supermarket you will find those. But that has also going down. And this Canton Fair, which is supposed to be barometer of China's foreign trade. Europeans and North Americans are less represented among the bustle of buyers at the twice yearly event. There are shrinking number of buyers from Russia and affluent regions of the Middle East. So, West is not coming, Russia is not coming, Middle East is not coming. And there are fewer buyers in the April season. In the last six months before that also, they said the same thing. It's a continual thing which is happening. And very sim simply put, Europeans and American buyers mean higher profit for them, which they're not getting. Kona hai? West Africans, Africans, Latin Americans, uh, some South Asians, not South Asians, East Asians and all come. They come. They are not interested in paying. So you they get value added, cheap stuff and go back. They want cheap stuff. So this is where China is stuck. Pessimism is just seeping out of a... I mean, one year back also, it wasn't so bad. 
every day today every day these days one to two articles i always find in south china morning post so right on this others won't talk yeah yeah caxin and he can talk but zinua global wo kya hai wo people's daily and all they don't talk international airlines are cutting flights to china okay because there's a ban on russian airspace people say get lost i'm not interested in coming earlier uh, british airways used to have some weekly flight to some place now it's uh, once in two week or not weekly a daily flight uh, to some place in china now it is once in a week or something like that slowly they're cutting down it's a hard reality okay and then if you think people are making money in the stock market no that's also not there now there's a very interesting thing which i saw and i i you know i'll show you in full scale this is a study carried out by stanford and this study was put out very recently okay september 2024 or red it's in red have you looked at it and they carried out a survey i think stanford has a center in china and through that they did all this okay what's the heading of that study getting ahead in today's china from optimism to pessimism very interesting this article this study have if you can get your hands on it read it he says this is it against let me read this because if you read it you'll understand what the story is against the backdrop of china's post 1978 economic transformation recent challenges such as covid-19 have prompted speculation about rising popular pessimism regarding current inequalities and opportunities to get ahead this study com- compares findings from three new nationally representative surveys conducted in 2023 23 last year with three earlier surveys conducted from 2004 2009 and 2014 so this is over a period of time results reveal a significant attitudinal shift with 2023 respondents expressing markedly more critical views about the fairness of current inequality patterns respondents in the 2023 surveys increasingly attribute poverty versus wealth to structural factors like unequal opportunities rather than to variations in individual merit so opportunities in china are going away that's the general feeling respondents also reported lower expectations for future income growth compared with the earlier surveys so they are not hopeful of getting incomes people while not indicating any imminent threats to political stability such trends suggest that china's leaders will likely face increasing skepticism and even critical popular responses as they try to mobilize their citizens to confront the serious challenges that china faces in coming years this is their assessment so he says is inequality the expectation of income is not there but people are not happy but there will not be serious political stability but who knows okay i will look at this this table say, shows in the heading attribution of why people in china are poor why people are poor rank the order in 2004 people were poor if you see yeah this here in 2004 people were poor because of lack of ability lack of effort or low education it remained so continuously for almost yeah till here okay till 2014 today that's not the case 
today unequal opportunity okay okay let me adjust my screen okay today unequal opportunity is the biggest factor then low education and third is unfair economic system okay or you go grew up in a poverty family so the why you are poor has changed completely now why people are rich again if you see in 2004 it is because of human capital which ability higher education connections these are the three top factors i'm taking 1 2 3 rank the rest you can see slowly today what is it connections is first okay if you are grew up in a rich family you are rich too okay better opportunities you get in the economic system is third but ability and talent hard work education and all are gone down see how things have changed in china <clears throat> okay this is comparison with the past and future expectations okay now this one panel says some of much better and somewhat better okay they what did they say will your future be better bad or you know worse they took five worse somewhat worse neutral somewhat better and much better you know compared to five years back or 2014 if you see the number of people who felt it was better or somewhat better was much higher in 2009 and 2014 it went up to 72 70% 80% and today it's just 30% only 30% feel that the future is better and against that if you see people who felt that the future will be bad was just 16 5% 4% and all you know that kind in up to 2014 an average is this today that number has gone up see why pessimism won't come this is all quantified okay there is again same same story in this also comparison with the past and future expectations some of much better and all that okay right okay now people have said okay there is another interesting thing let me see show you fully and i don't know whether you'll be able to see it also okay and uh, uh, let right if you see in this he says to what extent do you agree by family income level right in in the first thing in human capital this you know this one right in our country effort is always rewarded that's the first one right depending on the income brackets okay right you will find it's going down today that thing for effort is always re- uh, rewarded once in a po- once at a point of time it till about 2014 it used to be 63% felt if effort was record uh, always rewarded today it's only 22% to feel so so if we go into this also which i am not on here after going because it's too small if you see the survey in detail you see that quantified story is bad you take any parameter in china it's going down now we'll say yaar sab kuch niche hi ja raha tha where will it stop we don't know is there a method for china to pull out of this whole story it might be what they're doing with us in india might well be it i mean i have a feeling that what now they've gone back is all connected with their fundamental economics fundamental thing yeah all that but i will talk of that a little later 
So overall, if you see, there's a lot of pessimism in China and they have no way out of it. So what if? Do we feel happy about it? Can't. The whole idea is to predict the future, what will happen. I'm not interested in what happens in China. I'm interested in what happens to us. Like yesterday, I spoke about Tibet. If China's economy goes down, if climate change takes place and their population declines, Tibet has a chance and we have a chance. And I'll talk of it. I'll talk of this during climate change where we are going. Because uh, in the past two days, I got some interesting information about what will happen in Tibet as days go by. And also in the mainland. But that's a different story. So this is what uh, the story in China is. Why is there pessimism in China? There's a lot of reason I've given you. Okay. Now, with this, I've finished for what I had to do today. But what am I going to do ahead? Because I think for the next quite some time, as we start dealing with them, as thinning out or uh, you know disengagement starts on the LAC, as things move forward, uh, you know we need to understand China more, and I'll get it to you, so that it is through that prism we start seeing judging. Whether what's happening on the LAC is right or wrong, you can make a judgment and what will happen next. It is a madcap kind of things which I did, which helped me 2020 to say this is what will happen to China in the, in, on the LAC. And you heard what Sandeep Unatan told. The same kind of a thing which I keep going all around the countryside and boring you guys. That you come, I come to some conclusions what China can do and can't do. And China can't do many things at this point of time. Okay. So now the thing is uh, on Sunday, we're going to have a good panel on the India China breakthrough and we'll talk various issues. Okay. Uh, we're getting Kondapalli and Rakesh Sharma and all, and we'll talk. And Ambassador Trigunayat. That's one. Following that, Monday, I'm going to talk about, because now Chinese reactions are coming on this entire story. So I'll give you the Chinese reactions and their analysis and what their uh, story is uh, from their point of view. I'll get, I'm trying to read Chinese these days. Through Google. So Monday we'll talk of that. And based on their earlier writings, what they're now talking, so that will give you one trajectory. On Sunday, we'll get one trajectory with you know, experts. Then on Tuesday, I'm going to talk about the great game reset, which is happening. I'll speak about this with Brigida Arun Sagal because I think he's one of the most uh, strategically aware persons. And on Wednesday, I'll take, I'll talk to General Vinod Bhatia about the LAC and all that. And, you know, we feel that there is a great Himalayan blunder of China in this whole deal. We'll talk of it. So we'll attack China, psychology, I wouldn't say, you know, from uh, intellectual point of view, from five, six directions. And then we'll get an idea as to what is happening. And you'll also be able to then judge where things are going. Okay. Uh, I'm not bothered how many people come to see or not, but I'm going to do what is necessary for our country. Okay. With this, let me take some questions and then uh, we'll see where it goes.